For many years, Glasgow held the title of Scotland's shopping capital. But the effects of major retailers closing, fires, the pandemic and a change in consumer habits has hit Socky Hall Street particularly hard. There are now 37 vacant units on what is one of the city's main shopping streets and it's been compounded by the announcement by Marks & Spencer that it's closing its store there that it's held since 1935. Well, Stuart Patrick is Chief Executive of the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce. Good morning to you. Good morning. How much of a blow is Marks & Spencer's decision? Well, I guess it's uh, obviously a bad piece of news for those that work in the shop, and it's obviously bad news for Socky Hall Street as well. As you were saying, it's a very unlucky street, Socky Hall Street. It's really hit uh, maybe three particularly challenging issues. One, um, that mid-market brands like BHS and Dun & Co, and now arguably M&S, where on online shopping is having the most impact, uh, have all been on Socky Hall Street. Um, and we've seen... Um, you know, all the pro pro uh, projections that maybe as much as 30% of floor space would in retail would be reduced over the decades. And the pandemic has just um, has just sped that up. And of course, Nugget Hall Street, as you said, has had two major fires which have left two very substantial derelict sites. So it, it's really been struggling against the trends and against uh, fortune uh, in the last three or four years. And what needs to happen now then? Do uh, those uh, in charge need to just sit and wait in the hope that retailers will come back or do they have to face the fact that the landscape has changed? Well, I think there's probably short-term and uh, medium-term actions needed. First of all, we really need to see the lifting of the COVID restrictions. I think it's worth remembering that we've had 20 months of working from home guidance uh, or direction, and we've had empty campuses, and those are both very significant impacts on uh, the city centre and particularly on uh, Socky Hall Street. Uh, in December, we lost 40% of the normal Christmas business uh, compared to 2019. So we need to see the restrictions come to an end before we can see any form of recovery. Well, sure, but the, po but the point that you've made is that some of those issues were already um, obvious before the pandemic struck with the closure of some of those retailers and large units sitting vacant. Agreed, but we can't get started until these restrictions, we can't get any recovery started until these restrictions come to an end. When they do, then we're in a position to see, A, whether the market is likely to respond to things like um, the public realm investment that the City Council made uh, at the Charing Cross end of Socky Hall Street. But also, I think uh, it also allows us to begin to uh, explore the adaptation work that we've been doing through the City Centre Task Force, um, which means going out into the market and saying well, what sorts of incentives are going to be needed. And I do think incentives are going to be needed to help repurpose uh, those empty units are the into available? new uses. Uh, at, at this stage, no, and that's one of the ar arguments we'll be making, that, 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 that it would be good to see, for example, a return to something like the business premises renovation allowance that was in place between 2007 and 2017. Now, that's something the UK government could uh, could do to help uh, the recovery of city centres, because you should remember, it's not just sorry, Hall Street. This is something that's an issue for large cities uh, across the UK. The, the pandemic and the shift to online retailing are hitting large cities all across the country. But can we look to other cities as examples of good practice? We know, of course, we've got this new uh, shopping centre in Edinburgh, for instance. Uh, do, do we need something like that for Socky Hall Street? Well, I... Obviously, you'll have seen the announcement that uh, Lansec had made, uh, as well as, of course, the announcement that Sovereign Centros have made, that they're reviewing uh, how they uh, operate Buchanan Galleries and Sovereign Centros at St Enoch's. Those are two major investors that are, are, are already saying we're, we're committed to making a change to the offer in Glasgow. Uh, and that's really good news for us. Actually, the question is, do shopping centres actually have a future? Um, that one of the challenges for St James's will be that it was it was designed and built uh, before the full uh, weight of the trends to online and the impact of pandemic potentially through working from home. We don't really know what that's going to play out as. So it's good that we've got Lansec and Sovereign Centros making their plans for substantial redevelopment in Glasgow city centre that will help us adapt to those trends. Stuart Patrick, Chief Executive of Glasgow Chamber of Commerce.